Fox News, or whatever you might watch, the media cannot have a greater word into our lives than the word of God. I know I got amen in some place, but we can easily filter into uh, the things that are taking place. I don't want to give any place to hysteria or, or the questions that abound. I have a God who's got every answer to every question. And so even if I don't know it, even if I don't have an answer, I have the answer living inside of my heart. Hallelujah. And so now we can continue to go and, and move forward and say, why aren't you worried? Why, why are you distressed? Why are all these things going on? Well, you know what? His eye is on the sparrow. And, you, and I found out that he's watching over me. So let me tell you something. I trust him. I'm taking rest upon my Savior's truth. I'm just sitting back. I know that. I know there are things we got to do, that, that there are things that we have to handle, and we'll do that. But we can do that in the context of resting on, my, on our Savior's truth. Can I tell you that sheltering in didn't happen when Governor Prisker or, or someone else spoke up? Do you think that all of this happened and God had to turn on the TV to find out what was going on? Long before it happened, God got the news. God knows. He's aware. And he sees everything that's taking place. And I, I don't want to walk away from this microphone without you understanding that God knows and God sees and he hears all. There's different more points in the scriptures where God used a sheltering of sorts to protect his people. We know about the about Exodus 12 where, where God put the and ordered the Israelites to put blood on the doorposts. They and he told them to shelter in. Did you hear this? He told them shelter in. Because when the death angel comes by, those who are covered by the blood, oh hallelujah, that those who are covered by the blood will be saved. Hallelujah. I want to tell you about another time in Genesis 19 when the angels came to get, to get locked because in Sodom and Gomorrah there was all kind of hell and confusion taking place. They were going to wait outside for Lot. But Lot told them, no, you got to come in. you got to shelter in. I, I, I want you to be safe because I'm going to need you in the morning. There are things that have happened in our times and in our past that begin to give us more understanding of the things that God did in the process of shelter. There was another moment of time in the book of Joshua where a woman named Rahab was in the land and in the midst of that situation, Joshua and another man came to, came to spy out the land, came to see the land. It was noised abroad that they were coming. And they, they, they went to see Rahab. And Rahab hid them in the house. And then when the men came to, to get Joshua, she hid them up on the roof. They, they sheltered in. And somebody's got to hear that today. They, they found a place where they were safe. Let me just read part of that. Joshua 2, verse 8. I'm going to read just a little bit. Before the men laid down, she came upon, upon them to the, on the roof and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land. Somebody's got to hear this today. And that the fear of you, not fear of the 
land, not fear of the giants, not fear of the situation, that the fear of you has fallen upon us. And that all the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt. And what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sion and Og, whom you devoted, devoted to destruction. And as soon as we heard it, our hearts melted. And there was no spirit left in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. Now then, please, I swear to, please swear to me by the Lord as I have dealt with you kindly. And you will also deal kindly with my father's house and give me a sure sign that you will save alive my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them and, de and deliver our lives from death. And the men said to her, our life for yours even to death. If you do not tell this business of ours, then when the Lord gives us the land, we will deal kindly and faithfully with you. It's fascinating. Think about it. There was, a, there was a type of sheltering in that took place. And a woman, a prostitute, heard about their God and had enough faith to take care of the men of God. Can I tell you something today? During this time of sheltering in, there, there, is a, a, there are prayers that are going forth. There's a move that's happening. There's a change that's taking place, hallelujah, that, is, that would not otherwise happen without some of us sheltering in. I want you to get it today. God is always moving. John 19. The same, then the same day, I believe this verse 1, the same day at evening, for being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled. You hear that? The, the disciples had sheltered in. Why? For the fear of the Jews. It came, and then came Jesus in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when, they, when he said so, he showed unto them his hands and his side. And then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I send you. I, I, want you to, I, I just want you to picture yourself sheltering in. I want you to picture Jesus stepping into the room. I want you to picture that moment in time. See, we're, we're sheltering in for a reason, for a purpose. To keep stuff out. But can I tell you that God's doing a sheltering that's bringing his presence in. Woo! Hallelujah. There's something that he's doing right here in our midst if we choose to trust him. If we choose to believe that no matter what our experience is right now, God's got a plan. Come on, come on, you got to hear it. you got to understand it. You're not the first one that had to shelter in. You're not the first one that had to keep evil out. You're not the first one that wasn't sure exactly what was going on. But there was a change, hallelujah, that happened with Rahab's family. You hear what I'm saying? There's a change that happened with the disciples. There was a change that continued to happen. There, was, there were life-saving measures that happened with the children of Israel in Exodus. I want you to understand today that th when this happened, that wasn't the first time that God got the news. He's moving, he's got a plan, and he's bringing deliverables into our lives right now. Hallelujah. I want to read this in, in, in uh, wrapping up one passage of scripture going back to Psalm 91. See, understand that we all have a part to play in this movement that's taking place. 
The same here in this passage of Scripture. One of the things that I love about this passage, this particular passage of Scripture, is one of, it happens to be one of the few passages where there is a response from God. That there is a response from God. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, the passage of Scripture that we all often read, we have to understand that that passage is a response from prayer. If you go back and read uh, chapter 6 throughout that, time, throughout that process, God responded. God responded to their faith. God responded to their faith. If you go scroll down to verse 14 of Psalm 91, the rest of the passage, the next three verses, is not one of the psalmists writing. There is a pause, and God looked down from his throne, and he began to speak. Through all, all of the previous four, 13 verses, there's this, this wonderful poetic process of speaking of the, the power of God and how God will move and how God does great things for us. But then God himself responds. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. God spoke to the faithfulness of his people. God began to declare, this is what I'm going to do because they know my name. This is what I'm going to do because they trust me no matter what. We have to be a people who will cause a response from heaven. Woo, woo. There have, we have to be a people who are not constantly ambivalent and, and going back and forth and wondering what's going to happen. We have to be a people in this land who say, I know God. And I know that he's sitting high but looking low. I know he has a promise and a plan for me. I know there's a direction that my God has for my life. Come on, somebody, just give him a praise just right now. He's declaring. He's speaking. He's speaking. He's speaking. So at this moment, at this time, it has to be the narrative of our lives. Faith has to be the movement of our lives. Because there's a lot of people out there who don't have it. All of you who are there watching through Facebook and, 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 and sharing with other people. All of you who, who are here, I've I got to get you to, to understand that we can get through this as we trust God and we keep moving with Him. heard someone say that one thing is for sure when we get through this things won't be the same I agree things won't be the same but my question is is does that mean that things are going to be worse or are things going to be better hallelujah you know what I believe it's going to get better because there's more people than ever right now, right at this moment, who are choosing to trust God. Is that you today? Is that you today? Is that you today? Are you coming to a place to where I, you're saying, I'm going to take my rest upon the Savior's truth. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust him anyway. It's an individual choice. It's an individual directive that each one of us has to have. I want you to know something, that your voice is a lot bigger, is a lot bigger than you're giving it credit for. If you, if you run into 
a relative, if you, you're sitting with someone who's just not sure, maybe your soliloquy, maybe the things that you see, the thing that you say, now begins to be a turning point for someone else to say, you know what? I'm going to trust God too. Can we, at this time, at this moment, be that difference maker, that person who, who encourages to, to exercise more faith? Can we be that chorus of people that emphasize that God is alive and well and that he knows our frame and that he understands what we're going through? Can we be that explanation point of a believer who expresses and then lives the changed life? It's needed, you guys, all around us right now. Somebody needs to hear another word of faith. Not stupidity. I've, re I've ridden the roller coaster of, of fearful faith. But when we come to a place of a, to a mature place of understanding that no matter what we're going through, God's got us. No matter what we're, what we're experiencing right now, we can trust him. We can rest. We can say, it's going to be okay. Let's pray. Lord, I want to say thank you for this moment. Thank you that your word is going forward to your people. I ask you, Lord God, that there would be significant deliverables in each person's life as they choose to take rest upon our Savior's truth. Lord, I ask that you would allow someone who doesn't know, someone who doesn't believe, to now come to a faithful decision to trust you no matter what. Lord, I, I speak into these airways. I, I speak your faith power to move and to change people. I decree your healing for anyone who may have tested positive for this virus. We break its hold off of people's lives right now. We will declare your victory. We will declare your change and your move. Let us be a people that calls you to respond just like you did in Psalm 91. Thank you, Lord. Bless we ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you give me one more hand of praise? We want to thank you for tuning in, for taking time to be here with us. We need to receive our offering, and that is just as important a part of worship as the songs we sing and receiving the Word of God. I'm asking that those of you who are, who are watching by Facebook can do one of two things. You can go to worshipctr.com, that's worshipctr.com, scroll down on that very first page, and you will see a place for donations that says, in yellow, pay now. I ask that you just blow up that site right now. Give your gifts to the Lord. I'm going to be here for at least another hour or so. If you desire to come out as you're going to the Walmart Worship Center before you take your money there, if you would come and give your offering here, we'll be here. There'll be one, one or two of us here that can receive your offering and make sure that it gets deposited. Um, our app is available. It's open and working. 
but let me just say that the app actually takes you right to uh, the website. So you can skip that portion and just go directly to the website, the very first page, scroll down to the yellow box that says pay now. Thank you. Thank you for supporting your church, for supporting your ministry. We're going to continue to do all that we can to, to spread the gospel, to share his word with you, and to be here to pray and stand with you no matter what. Okay? Anything else? God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you real soon.